Hello, True Crime Stories family. Welcome. There are still more questions than answers in this case. Stephen Smith's mother strongly believes that her son's death was a premeditated crime that a group of people set up. Who and why would they set Stephen up? They set Stephen up to beat him to death. One of the burning questions that Stephen's mother wants to know is why he would leave his wallet in his car. Investigators reopened the investigation because of something they found while investigating Maggie and Paul's death, but they still haven't told his mom what it was yet. Right now, all she can do is speculate, guess, and rely on rumors from the kids in their town. Maybe investigators found some kind of evidence in Paul's phone that connected him to Stephen's death. Maybe text messages with details about the incident, videos or pictures showing what happened and who was involved. There was rumors that investigators found something on Paul's computer and they found the bat that was used in Stephen's fatal death. His mom is staying strong and hopeful that she will get answers soon. I wonder what they found during the Murdoch's investigation that connected someone in the Murdoch's to Stephen Smith's death. Why was Alex and his brother Randy at the scene? Did Paul or Buster get caught up and called their daddy in the middle of the night to clean up their mess and possibly interfere with the investigation? I bet they don't normally do business at a crime scene in the middle of the night. That's weird. Randy lied about being at the scene and only admitted to being there the next day. Stephen suffered from a dislocated right shoulder, broken eye socket, and his head was crushed. Stephen was in the fight for his life. He also had defensive wounds on his body. All the family kept hearing was that the Murdoch boys did this. I really hope they find out who did this to Stephen. It is an injustice until investigators find out what happened and give his mom closure. They are making progress in their investigation. The grand jury issued subpoenas for some people, but there are five or six people that know what happened that tragic day. I hope these people step up to the plate and tell the truth because somebody knows what happened. Sandy just wants an explanation and to find out the truth, although a crime has been committed. They should go back and find out what went wrong with the first investigation into Stephen's death. When they removed his body from the road, Alex and his brother Randy were there. When they were on their way to the funeral home to make arrangements, Randy called and asked Sandy if that was her that just rode by. That was inconsiderate and the worst timing. She said yes, that was me. Then he proceeded to tell her that she should have stopped so he could have met her. Randy allegedly got someone to call investigators to make up a story and lie to get the attention off of Buster and Paul. Why is Randy lying? What does he have to hide? Sandy is saying that Alex and Randy were there at the crime scene twice, once after Stephen's body was moved and then the next day with an investigator. Was the investigator working on this case close to the Murdochs? Did they go over to Moselle to hunt and have dinner with the Murdochs? Stephen's Smith case hasn't been solved because it was pre-planned, covered up by authorities to look like a hit and run instead of a homicide, then swept under the rug for years. Randy allegedly lied about being at the scene twice. Randy's lawyer said he wasn't at the accident scene in the early morning when his body was moved. He was only there later on the next day. The autopsy report was given to SLED, Randy's connection to the Smiths. Randy helped Sandy's husband with a workers' compensation case. Randy's lawyer said Stephen's father called Randy on the phone and said, I need your help. Boy, do the Murdochs know how to lie. The Smiths were worried about finding out what happened to their son and arranging his funeral. They weren't worried about suing people. The Connection Between Stephen Smith and One of Alex's Victims Tommy Moore was one of the first from Highway Patrol called to the scene for the death of Stephen Smith. Before I could get out of the car, the coroner said, No, no, it's not a wreck. It's a Moore recalled. Tommy Moore, a former lieutenant with the South Carolina Highway Patrol SCHP, is also one of Alex's financial victims. They deserve their day in court. We are going to pursue every case that involves every other victim that get their shot and they get their day in court, said Alan Wilson. Moore said he looks forward to facing his former attorney in court. 
I would be more than happy to sit in a courtroom with Mr. Murdoch and explain the circumstances on how he stole my money and look him in the eye and let him look me in the eye. Let him say he didn't lie to me. Let him say he didn't steal from me. I'd be more than happy to testify, Moore said. He is still dealing with the lingering pain from his injuries. He never expected this is where his story would go. I thought Alex Murdoch was a nice guy. That's all he came across as super nice guy saying, I want to help you. You done wrong. He pat my back, shook my hand, said if you need anything, call me. Couldn't have been a nicer guy, Moore said. He had a $100,000 injury settlement stolen by Alex, but he finally got some of his money back from the disgraced attorney's former law firm. Lieutenant Thomas Moore retained Murdoch's legal services after being severely injured in a line-of-duty crash during a rare snowstorm in January 2018. The state trooper says it wasn't until Alex's apparent years-long history of criminal schemings began coming to light in September 2021 that he learned Alex had apparently stolen his six-figure settlement. Moore said in an exclusive interview with ABC News recently, he hadn't seen a dime of his settlement money since turning it over to Murdoch in good faith two years after the crash. Moore said Murdoch's former law firm in Hampton, South Carolina, finally sent him an installment payment. Documentation Moore provided shows the Peters, Murdoch, Parker, Eltsroth, and Dietrich law firm sent him a check for $38,000, which is less than half of the original settlement total. Another $37,000 was being withheld until the resolution of a workman's compensation case with medical providers. For the first time, Sandy met with Tommy Moore, who was there when her son Stephen was found dead in July of 2015. I've read his report thoroughly. I want to thank you so much for, you know, doing your job, Smith said directly to Moore. I appreciate that for the longest time I figured you disliked us because we didn't solve it and I hate that it occurred, Moore said. At first we were told it's a gunshot. Then they came back and said he was beat up. Then it came out he was hit by a car, Smith said. Then he got out of the car and walked the scene. Moore wanted to see for himself. He then left. About an hour later I got a call to come back to the scene. When we did they said this is a hit and run. I said no, it's not. Both Sandy Smith and Tommy Moore said Stephen was not killed in a hit and run. During Highway Patrol's investigation, Moore called the pathologist who ruled Stephen was because of a hit and run. He said he had a heated conversation with her. I said, can you tell me medically why you're ruling this a hit and run? She said because he was in the road. I said, ma'am, that's not a medical reason. At some point they did an x-ray of his head and there was no bullet inside his head, he added. Moore didn't let up after his phone call with the pathologist. He continued even as Highway Patrol did its investigation. You're talking to a wall, they already made their minds up, Moore said. Sandy Smith wouldn't quit either. She knew her son was not by a car. The pathologist is a voice for the death, and you were not a voice for my son, Smith said. She said hearing Moore agree gives her more peace. To hear it, yeah, it gives me a little peace, hearing someone actually say it and agree it's not a hit and run, she said. According to Moore, when Stephen Smith's body was found on a Hampton County road back in 2015, he knew at the onset that the 19-year-old was murdered. Led, sheriffs, Hampton County Coroner's Office. If they had done their job that day, I don't think we would be here today, said Moore. He said it did not appear Smith was hit by a car. His road rash was minor and his shoes were still on his feet. I definitely think he was murdered, murdered elsewhere and dropped there. Frustrated, Moore said he took his theories on Stephen's death to the higher ups at SCHP. I felt like the brass, which would be the people. Where it was moved somewhere else that I didn't sign. It wasn't my signature. A state trooper is telling all about his dealings with Alec Murdoch, the crash that broke his neck, the personal injury settlement, and the missing money. And he only spoke to our investigative reporter, Ann Emerson. Well, Lieutenant Tommy Moore agreed to speak with us and only with us. He was involved in a crash in 2018. He was represented by Alec Murdoch and still hasn't been compensated for his medical expenses. We had Rex galore. 
Four years ago, with snow falling, it was all hands on deck for state troopers. We had troopers and we have limited manpower. Um, all the lieutenants went out to help. And as Lieutenant Thomas Moore sat in his patrol car, he got hit. Causing it to basically drive up under my car and lift it up and then slant it back down and it broke my seat in the process and threw me back. The pain was excruciating. And it basically felt like I was being, for a back, lack of a better word, shocked with electric current. I felt like current was running through my arms and legs. Moore says he was misdiagnosed for months, walking around with a broken neck. Initially, I hired, uh, I call it the Murdoch Law Firm. I'm not sure exactly what the whole PMP thing is. But anyway, I went to uh, Mr. Murdoch, um, a, a trooper friend of mine that was retired, recommended him. With assurances from Alec Murdoch that the money would come, Moore had surgery covered temporarily by his personal insurance. Um, at C5, they put in a metal uh, disc. Uh, they actually um, fused C6 and C7 together and put in a metal plate. Um, and that's pretty much the extent of it. Uh, they had to basically put Humpty Dumpty back together again. As promised, $100,000 did come through, Moore says. They paid what? It was $100,000 covered, and that's what they paid out. So it was $100,000? Yes, ma'am. And that $100,000 came to you? Yes, ma'am. So how did you receive that money? Um, it came in the mail. I was called ahead of time, um, I don't know, a couple days maybe, and told that a check would be coming to me and that I needed to take it to the law firm and endorse it, and I never had access to that. And it had to stay in an account, and nobody could touch it until this case was resolved. And that's what happened for about three and a half years, with his workman's compensation case still unresolved and medical bills piling up until Moore got a call from a lawyer at Murdoch's firm. Mr. Ball called me and said, look, Tommy, there's a problem. Your money's been taken. So somebody forged your signature? Yes, ma'am. And you don't know who that was. You don't know if it was Alec Murdoch, but you know that you didn't sign that paperwork. Uh, I don't know who actually physically signed it. I do know that uh, Mr. Murdoch took that money and put it in another account. He, I know he did that because the paperwork I was shown, it, I mean, unbeknownst to me, it was gone the day I gave it to him. It went somewhere else. And that check? he says was made out to forge the name of an account court records show belonged to Alec Murdoch. Lieutenant Moore also says he hasn't gotten his $100,000 settlement from Murdoch's former law firm because they are still charging him attorney's fees after all he's been through. He wants Alec Murdoch to stay in jail. The people running highway patrol should have stood up to SLED and said, this is not a hit and run. Y'all are asking us to investigate something that is not a hit and run. Moore then took the case to the Hampton County Sheriff's Office and line by line explained to them why this was not a hit and run and tried to hand them the file and they would physically not take it with their hands. If someone would have listened to this officer, things could have turned out different because they would have started investigating Stephen's case immediately and we would have more answers instead of questions all these years later. I wonder if any of the investigators on the scene that night that interfered with Stephen's investigation will ever be held accountable.